Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 7.1b, Finding Square Roots Practice Problems. Our essential question is, how do you find the square root of a number? Today, you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 7.1, a pen or a pencil. Highlighters may be helpful. You will not be using a calculator today. So bring your problem solving skills, your bright ideas, and your best effort. So we're going to start with example number two, where we're finding the square roots. And remember that simplify means that there are no more perfect squares left under the square root symbol. So we're going to look at some very similar problems. The first one we're going to look at is the square root of 49. And you should know the square root of 49. If you don't, you should or you can be using a multiplication chart that will help you. The square root of 49, you should know is seven. And knowing that's gonna help you do the next four problems. So the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna look at this one right here and read this in a way that's going to help us. And so the way that we wanna read this is the opposite of the square root of 49. And when you read it that way, it's going to help you get to the correct answer. The opposite of the square root of 49, you know that the opposite means that negative. And we know that the square root of 49 is seven. And so right there pops out our answer. We know that the answer is going to be negative seven. And that's it. That's how you're going to do these answers is you start with what you know, which is that square root. And then you're going to pop the negative in front of it. So when we do the next one, which is a three, you're going to look at this right here. And the way that we read that is both the positive and the negative square roots of 49. Because if you remember, we know that negative seven times negative seven is 40 is 49. And we know seven times seven is 49. And so this one's saying, Hey, I want both of them. And so both the positive and the negative is that positive and negative. And then the square roots of 49, which is seven. And so that's how you're going to write it. You're going to write that plus and the minus and that seven. And um, there you go. You have your answer. So it's really just as simple as paying attention to what's in front of that number and then writing it down. And then A4, we're going to read this one, and this is the square root of negative 49. So that's what this says, the square root of negative 49. But that's not possible because when you multiply two positives together, you get a positive. But when you multiply two negatives together, you get a negative. So there's no way to multiply the two of the same numbers and get a negative number. So we can't do this, which is okay. This is not possible. Right now, I'm going to put a little right now after that when you're in high school you'll actually find out how to do these so we are going to say no real solution it's really important that you put the the real in here because remember i said in high school there is a way to do this so we're going to say no real solution so pay attention to those four different scenarios that all might have the same exact number but one's going to be positive one's going to be negative one's going to be positive negative and one's going to be no real solution this is a really important one. You might want to, when you go do your focus notes, put a big old highlight around it and make some real good annotations in this. So now that we have these four scenarios, let's go do some practice problems. So we're going to find the square roots. And here we have that plus and minus right here again. And then we have the square root of nine over 64. So the first thing we want to remember or know that we can do is that we can break a fraction into a square root of nine and a square root of 64. So break that square root into the numerator and the denominator like this. We know our answer is going to have a plus and minus in front of it because right now we have that plus and minus. So we're going to do the square root of nine and the square root of 64. Use that multiplication chart if you need to, but you should get these memorized. The square root of nine we know is three. The square root of 64 we know is eight. So the answer to this is plus or minus three eighths. Example number two. So now when the problems get a little more complex like this, now we need to like really pull out that perseverance and now we need to get to work. So the square root of 484, when you see something like this, this is not going to be on your multiplication chart, but there is work you can do to get there. What you wanna do is you wanna start breaking this down into a factor tree. So I look at 484 and I just pick out two things that I know will go into it and maybe I'm not that great at multiplication and that's okay. So I just know four ends and an even number. So it's two times something. That's fine. 
Two times 242. That is good enough for me. So some of you were taught that once you find your prime number, you stop pulling it down. I'm going to tell you, especially for these ones, you want to keep pulling those prime factors all the way down. So you're only going to look at one line when you're done. So again, I know that this is divisible by two. So I'm going to pull that down and I'm going to get two times 121. And that's okay. That 121, that looks really familiar from my multiplication chart. I know it's 11 times 11 prime numbers, and I'm going to take my two, my two down as well. Now I remember square roots just say, go find those twins. So I have a pair of twins here and a pair of twins here. So I have two times two times 11 times 11. So there's my twins. I'm going to circle them. So those are going to come out. So I have a two and 11, two times 11 is 22. So now my answer is 22. So I had to do some work with a factor tree. And now I just pull out my perfect squares or pull out those twins. And my answer is 22. So what happens though when I end up with this decimal? Never fear. Use some problem solving skills. I look at that 1.69 and it kind of reminds me of 169, which I know is 13 squared. Moved over to decimal places. So I start playing around with it. I go, okay, well, what if I moved my 13 to 1.3 and I play around with it and I just multiply it out? Well, I know that if I go 1.3 times 1.3, that my answer would move over to decimal places, right? Because of decimal multiplication. I have a decimal place here and a decimal place here. So my 169 would go one, two, and it would become 1.69. So I know this works. So I have my twins, and so my answer is 1.3. And that is something that as you do more of these, you get better at. You get better at recognizing, oh, if I have two decimal places, then my number is going to be a one decimal place number. If I have four decimal places, then my number is a two decimal place. You would divide it in half. It took me a lot of years to figure that out. But at once I did, I went, oh, okay, I start to get this. So you start playing with your numbers a little bit until you get it and you understand it. So what about the square root of 50? Well, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause this and I'd like you to make a factor tree and get as far as you can. So how far did you get? Did you get that 50 was five times 10 or two times 25? I went two times 25. Doesn't matter which way you went, but I went two times 25 and I knew that 25 was five times five. Now you might've gotten a little stuck and that's okay if you did, that was fine. I know that 25 times two, then me is five times five times two. And then right here, do you see that right there? Those are my twins. So those twins, <clears throat> one got out, one had to stay, but then this one didn't have a twin. So it had to stay in the square root. It's really important. If we don't have a twin, we stay in the square root. So my answer ended up being five root two. And that's my answer. It's okay if we didn't have a twin that we stay in. We just have to make sure that we put ones with twins on the outside and ones without twins stay in. Okay, try this one. The square root of 12. You try it and see where you go. All right, so what did you do? Did you do three times four or did you do two times six? And does it matter? First, it doesn't matter. Second, neither one's easier than the other. I went with two times six. I don't know why, I just did. Then my six broke down into two times three. Do you see the twins there? Two times three, so my twins was the two. So right there, that part, one came out and then the three stayed in the square root. Okay, 7,200. Wow, that's a big number, but really let's just break it down a little bit. Um, there's some easy numbers that you should always pull off, okay? The first easy number you should pull off, if you see zeros, you need to pull off tens, hundreds, thousands, things like that. It makes your life so much easier. So. I pull off a hundred right off the bat. And as soon as I pull off a hundred, I have 72. And those numbers are so much more manageable right there. So now that we pulled those off, what would we do next? Well, a hundred, I really hope you break that into 10 and 10. 72, there we start making our own decisions. I picked eight and nine. Why? I don't know. I just did. Nine I know is three and three. 
eight is four and two, 10 is two and five, and two and five. The twos I bring down, the fives I bring down. The four is two and two, a two and a three and a three big, ugly, a whole bunch of numbers going on. And that's okay. That's actually why we do this is because it's so big. It's so ugly. It gives us a place to start. And then we go, okay, now we'll just reorganize everything. So I start looking, I have a two and a two and a two and a two and a two. So I have one, two, three, four, five twos. I have two threes and I have two fives. So now that I know, and I'm gonna count them all up, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna bring it over here and rewrite it all underneath that square root. So it's nice and neat. And I'm gonna group everything together. I didn't put it in order. I don't know why I wasn't paying attention maybe. I don't know. But here I have a two and a two and a two and a two and all that. Okay, so I have a group and a group. That two doesn't have a group, so it doesn't go anywhere. And a group and a group. So here's that one, here's this one, here's the five, here's the three, and there's that two that doesn't go anywhere. So two times two is four, times five is 20, times three is 60. So this all is 60 root two. So when you're asked to show your work, it's really this factor tree that I'm looking for. I wanna be able to see that factor tree so I know where all of this comes from. There's some, like if it was just 20 and you just showed this part, I'm okay with that. That's a small number. But when you get into those big numbers, you want to see that factor tree so that I can figure out if you make a mistake, I can find it in your factor tree. I'm never going to be able to find it in this. I want you to try this one on your own, the square root of negative 64. Go ahead and pause it and work on it. All right, what did you come up with? I'm hoping what you came up with was no real solution. Why? Because it's a negative number under the square root. And remember, when you have a negative number under the square root, you can't do that because you can't multiply any tune of the same number and come up with a negative number. So hopefully what you wrote was no real solution. And if you wrote no solution, I want you right now to give yourself a quick pat on the back because that right there is a, the most important thing that you need to take away from today is that you can't do that. So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of flip this a little bit and think about it a little bit differently. I want you to create a square root problem whose answer is five root three. So can you reverse this? Can you take this and figure out what the problem was that you got the answer of five root three? Can you do it? I bet you can. Thank you so much for joining us today in square roots. It's one of my most favorite topics because it's so much fun. I love breaking these problems down and puzzling it out. Thank you so much for joining us again. And remember, be kind to one another because we can always use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.